one of those crypto wallets is called MetaMask. But like anything else, new technology comes with new scams and hackers are looking to take advantage. If you hack the endpoint, if you hack the user, hmm. then you can get the money stolen. Hackers just stole more than $5 million from Solana connected wallet. Data from Elliptic found that more than 8,000 hot wallets or wallets connected to the internet have been drained since the hack began. What is air-gapped? Is a network security measure employed on one or more computers to ensure that a secure computer network is physically isolated from unsecured networks, such as the public internet or an insecured local area network. There's no such thing as being 100% secure. The only way to truly achieve maximum security is to be completely disconnected, disconnected, disconnected. Keystone. It's a work of art. Definitely, it's a work of art. And the fact that we have a completely air gap cold wallet that is truly air gap, you're not going to run the risk against other solutions out there that are cold wallets. But when you plug into a machine, it becomes a hot wallet. And if your machine is infected with a malware that is looking for an exploit in a code flaw in the particular device, that is a big risk. All you need to have is your machine infected with malware. You plug that cold wallet into the machine, cold wallet, and the malware executes the payload. God knows it sends sensitive information to the command and control center of that malware. And that's it. Bye bye. Okay. Not only that, it's multi chain, meaning that I not only can store Ethereum based blockchains or EVM blockchains, I can also store Bitcoin. I can also store Polkadot. I can store coins from so many blockchains out there that I don't need to have so many wallets to store tokens and not manage them properly because that's a problem. Also, it is trusted by so many, many reputable blockchain space organizations. To just name a few, there you go. Inside the box, we're going to have two small black boxes. Make sure it's completely sealed. So this is very important. This is where your wallet will be at. OK, so let me go ahead and open the first box. I'm going to show you what's inside. Basically going to have a USB charging cable. Why am I repeating this? Because the only way that I'm going to be able to connect this is to the battery itself, which I am going to show you in a second. It also includes an adapter that allows you to put triple A batteries. So it needs four triple A batteries in case you are not going to use the included lithium ion battery pack. You can also use the triple A option. Okay. So that's another a good benefit right there. Okay. So let me show Show you the amazing wallet. Okay, so I'm gonna have some information regarding the actual registration and so forth. And here it is. Okay, I want to do the satisfaction of taking this pill out of here. Ooh, that felt good. Okay, so this is the wallet. Very, very clean. Okay, so very important to understand. The wallet itself only has three connectivity points or three connection points. This is just to connect the battery pack to the wallet itself. It has the fingerprint reading. So when we set up the fingerprint reading, we can authenticate to the wallet and open the wallet using our finger. And I have a camera which allows me to scan the QR code. So we will have an app that will sync to this wallet. But again, we're not going to use any USBs at all. This is completely air gap. We are going to be exchanging information between the wallet and the application using QR codes scan with the camera. Okay, cool. 
lastly, I already set mine with an SD card that allows me to do firmware updates, which is very important. You need to do the firmware updates so then you can obtain the latest improvement in the OS. Not only that, I will have access to more tokens and more coins in the wallet. So the moment it gets you shipped from the factory, you might have a lower revision. So I am going to show you how to do this quick upgrade. You just need a micro SD card and this SD card has to be formatted using FAT32, which is going to be a little bit tricky if you're using a micro SD card that is higher than 32 gigs because FAT32 supports all the way to 32 gigs. So if you have a higher one, I'm going to show you how can you get around that? Check this out. If you have an adapter like this, just go ahead and insert the SD card inside here. Beautiful. Now you can go ahead and insert that on your machine. After you insert your SD card into your PC, make sure that you can access your SD. And also keep in mind, this procedure will delete all the files that you have in the SD card. So make sure that you do a backup, okay? Now we're going to do a quick search and type disk management, okay? And select create and format hard disk partitions. Once inside your disk management window, go to your SD card drive. In my case is going to be this drive I. So let's say if, if I want to format this in FAT32, here's a problem. I'm going to try to format it, right? You can see here, I don't have an option to do FAT32. I only have NTFS and EXFAT. We want to format this in FAT32 because the FAT32 only allows all the way to 32 gigs in size to be formatted. What we're going to do, we're going to delete the volume. Okay, has been deleted. Now we are going to create one new sample volume. And here's where we have to change the size. Okay, so we're going to configure 20 gigs. So it's gonna be 20,000, right? The update file is very small, so we should be fine, okay? So make sure that we lower the volume to 20, at least 20 gigs, okay? So that should be fine. Click next and we'll assign a drive letter. And now if we look, there we go. We can format this in FAT32. Call this SD card and FAT32 finish. And boom, there we go. Awesome. So now we have the SD card ready for us. Okay. Now, last thing that we have to do is we have to add the firmware update file onto the SD card. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now that we are inside Keystone's website, now we are going to head to resources. We're gonna go firmware. And once in firmware, we have two options. If you only want to store Bitcoin on this wallet, you want to make it a Bitcoin exclusive wallet only, you select Bitcoin. Else, if you want to store Bitcoin and also alts, then you use a multi-coin. Okay, so we are just going to click multi-coin and you can see right here, it's telling us that the latest firmware is going to be the 10.4. We are going to download that file and we have downloaded the file. So now what we need to do, we have to open the contents, but you can see right here, there is an update set. You don't want to extract this. What we want to do is we want to copy this and we want to paste inside the SD card as a zip file, okay? We are not going to extract the contents. We are just going to leave that compressed and make sure that I upload that into the SD card, okay? Done. Once you have uploaded the firmware image file, which is the zip file, remember like I told you, do not extract the contents of that zip file. And once you pop that in, you just turn it on. Once you turn it on, it's going to read that you have a new firmware available. Just press update, okay? Nothing else. And make sure that the device, it's a more than 70% charge before you go ahead and proceed. Now I'm gonna show you the battery pack, or the only time that you're gonna be plugging a USB to this wallet is going to be when you need to charge your lithium ion battery, which the interface or the port that you are going to connect that USB-C, you can see it's right here. It's right here. And plug it in. As you can see, I am only connecting the USB to the battery pack. I am not connecting the USB to the device itself. A true air gap device, no connectivity to any other external connection 
or computer that can compromise the device. Okay, cool. So once I charge this, right, I am going to be plugging this battery pack back onto the wallet. But check this out. You might say, well, but maybe there's something inside the battery that could be running some code that could potentially compromise the actual device. Let me tell you something. You can see here on the battery, we only have positive and negative contacts. We don't have any other type of communication, but the pins to provide the positive and negative. That's it. So I'm just going to plug it back there. Beautiful. That was clean. Okay. Let me go ahead now and show you how this beauty powers up. You're just going to hold the up button that you're going to get over here. And there you go. It's putting up. We'll wait for that to finish putting up. And there you have it. I have mine ready to go. By the way, the only thing that I'm going to do is put my index finger in the fingerprint reader and I should be able to unlock. Beautiful, beautiful. And as you can see right here, I have all my tokens. I'm going to show you that once you initialize this wallet, you are going to head under settings, right? And under settings, you have to make sure that you are setting your fingerprint settings. This is where you are going to be recording your fingerprint. So the first thing that you're going to do is you set your password. Once you get the password set up, then you can set your fingerprint and you can also add a pattern lock. Hear me out. Okay. When you initially boot up the wallet, it's going to get to the secret phrase that you need to write. And when I say write, I mean, you need to write them on a piece of paper. Please, please do not take a picture. Why? Because your phone, your smartphone, it's cloud connected, which means that your picture is going to be uploaded onto the cloud. It's going to be sent to the cloud and it's going to be stored in a cloud storage service. With iPhones, it's going to go to iCloud. Android is going to go to the Google G Drive. Then you eliminate the security air gap feature because now the keys to restore the wallet are in the cloud. You effectively remove that air gap feature. I don't necessarily need to have it disconnected and still not have it air gap. Took a picture of that and I sent it to the cloud. Then if I compromise my cloud account, I get access to the secret phrase and anyone can buy another unit of those and restore the secret phrase and voila, they have access to your fund. Do not take pictures. Okay. And it's definitely a work of art. Alrighty. So that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoy this amazing, amazing tour of the Keystone wallet. Okay. And if you want to buy one, I am going to give you the special one moon offer of 25% discount. If you use the coupon code net to death right now. Okay. I am going to leave the information in the video description below. It's only valid for one month. But if you watch this video after one month and you're not able to take this special offer, don't worry. It is way, way worth it. I would like to thank Keystone for sponsoring this video. And as always, thank you for watching.